All right, my love, KB, so happy to have you here. I just, your conversations we have together, like just light me up always. And we've had like this soul sister connection from the beginning. Uh, so I'm obviously going to share a lot about you in that, my own intro, but for those that like don't know you or your journey and like what you're about, tell us a little bit and like kind of how oh you like, awaken to this, because obviously my show is all about awakenings. Oh my gosh. It's so interesting. You just mentioned this because, um, I just had this like in-depth conversation about this this morning on a trail run, but guys, hi, I'm KB, um, Kate Middleton. Um, I'm a toxic free lifestyle advisor and a mindset coach. I'm based on the coast of central California. Um, my platform basically is based on the education of living a toxic free lifestyle so that can be a whole slew of things, but I like to break it down and I'll tell you exactly, maybe you can break into that a little bit more, but I basically believe that through the products that we use, you know, the relationships that we hold, the mental and physical nourishment that we consume in our life, we are faced with so many forms of toxic, you know, energies and just occurrences and culprits, anything that might hold us back, fears every single day, Right. So, um, obviously I have a podcast myself, but I also do consulting one-on-one. Um, I'm a writer, I'm a public speaker, all the things, but, um, my story kind of transitioned and really came about after a couple of, I always like to use compiling interest, right? A couple of compiling interest, traumatic events over time. And it wasn't until I finally cracked and saw and bared true witness to that and started to surrender to the universe that I was truly awakened. Um, I had to be a self-advocate in many different, um, I guess you could say, holistic healing uh, modalities that I had to choose to bring on. I'm not into, obviously, being a toxic-free lifestyle advisor, not into... um, you know, pharmaceuticals. I know sometimes it's proper to use, but in a long story short, um, after battling many traumatic years of endless, um, you know, kind of like the blood, sweat and tears moments um, from young childhood growing up in a dysfunctional household um, to kind of like diving into like dysfunctional relationships, you know, in the dating years, right? I was sexually abused um, in a relationship and you know, later on in life, I was living in toxic households with roommates. Everything was just kind of like on the same pattern. Right. And I was stuffing it down inside. Then I had mold illness. Then I got really extreme flare ups from autoimmune. Everything was being held within me. So, you know, we talked on my show about breath work, but you know, by kind of grabbing the reins and kind of like taking control of my own life, you know, I was having the conversation that from the outside, I look like sometimes I've got it all together, which I do, but it's taken a lot of time to create the system that works with me. And that's what I help people kind of bloom into as well. Yeah. And I love that you said that because it's true. Everyone has their different channels. Essentially, they need to subscribe to, they need to do to work with them, right? We all have we believe our own unique soul blueprints. I know you and I are on the same page with that. And even if you don't believe that in some way, you must know that, you know, you are unique and you are your own person. So therefore you are not going to subscribe to the same thing that KB is going to be into, or I'm going to be into, or it's one thing she's into and not something else that she's into. And that's totally cool and okay. But that's really, like you said, like what you do is you help people find their path with that and, you know, their way and their modalities and, you know, that sort of thing. So when you talk about KB, like, you know, the different traumas you went through, right. And you said everything was kind of held within you. What do you think it was that made you like actually crack open? Because I obviously have known this about your story, but then you sharing it here on my podcast and talking about it, me kind of hearing it more and really deepening listening and like feeling it because I'm an empath and like feeling what you're saying. I'm like sitting here and I'm like, wow. So like you went through, you know, one traumatic thing to the next, to the next. A lot of people do, unfortunately. And some people I feel like don't even ever really truly awaken and realize they can take their power back and they can actually shift the situation, and get out of being a victim from their reality. What do you think was your cracking open moment that allowed you to move from 
that victim mentality to actually being awakened, but then also empowered and how you beautifully described it as like grabbing the reins? Well, I think that's a great question. And I think just one thing, one, just one thing that comes into my mind is, you know, journaling and writing things down really shows you a lot over time. And I had books and books and I've kept them over time. Things that I want, things that I wish, right? Things that I'm writing down that I'm pissed off about, right? You know, maybe it's like not getting the job or not, you know, getting the date, the callback, right? Or, you know, just like my body hurting from autoimmune. Like, what is that telling you, right? And I think I just, I don't know if I can cuss on this, but I just, you're fine. Go for it. (laughs) I just became so fucking sick of myself. I was looking in the mirror and I was like, my face has no personality because I am holding myself back. I am living in lack mentality. And I think living in lack mentality kind of just like breathes that into the universe. And now let me just say, like, I, will never forget the day that I woke up when I, and when I do things like to heal myself, it's like like all or nothing, right? I'm going to do it and I'm going to be disciplined and dedicated. So after one instance where I was very much struggling, this is my early twenties, right? I'm in my mid thirties now. So I've come a long way. I've created my own system, but my early twenties, I basically was like in the middle of Kansas where I'm from, I'm from, you know, Midwest. And it was so cold. And I was, you know, I could complain so many years, like I'm cold, I'm cold. And I have rain odds autoimmune. So it was even colder, right? For my fingers and my toes. And I was like, forget this. And I was like, I need to go somewhere warm. And I had that lack mentality at the time being brought up from a dysfunctional messaging of money, right? That relationship with money. And I it was like, fuck it, fuck it. I'm going to, if I'm going to, you know, change my life, I'm going to spend the money that I have that I've been hoarding and savings. Right. Mm. So I went to Bali, Indonesia. Right. And I was like, forget this. I'm going to sell my car just in case I want to move over there. Right. And then I will never forget, you know, I was looking for that love in my life so much, that authentic love. And I remember this Balinese man said, "What, what do you miss? What do you miss? Why are you lonely? And he was just like, you know, Bali means love. And at that moment, I remember returning back to the States, having this crazy, amazing eye-opening adventure, and I laughed again. I learned that zest. And it's not until, I mean, I also had that during COVID too, 2020, because I was living alone at the time. My life, babe, you know, has transcended astronomically. Yeah, massively. I'm, yeah, I'm married. I've got a family of my own. It's crazy. But that being said, like, the break, the breakthrough. We talked about the breakthrough on on my show and that breakdown that happened. I basically kept seeing the repeated patterns in my journal, the same things I was saying Mm. over and over and over again, the same doodles I was drawing, right? The same things. And I was like, I'm not getting anywhere. So then I had to be like, it's up to me. It is up to me. And so no one's coming to save me, right? No one's coming to save me. When you separate yourself from that dysfunction and say, I am the only one living for myself. I'm taking complete 100% ownership of this toxic energy in my life, right? Boom, mic drop. (laughs) Yeah, here we go. But so important to say, because so many of us, no judgment whatsoever, because I've been there as well, live there and we stay there and it's comfortable to a point of a unhealthy comfort. It's like, oh, I can just be here because I know what this is. I know what lack feels like. I know what this negativity feels like. I know what this toxicity feels like. I don't know what the other side feels like. I don't know how much is going to take me to get there. So for you, KB, when you were, when you kind of like went to Bali and had this like enlightening moment, which I love. And I love that it was like, Bali means love. And you know, like you came back and you laughed and you like felt it in your body. It must've been so healing for like you and your nervous system and just like everything, you know, like what was it like then to receive that? But then also then have to further lean in and trust, truly trust and believe 
that you were going to keep moving forward into that and in that trajectory. Because I think even for me, like in my own healing journey, it's like you can get there and you can feel so empowered, but then there's so much of the lower frequencies and the shadow of ourselves, right? That we have to dance with that wants to essentially bring you back. And it's like, I tell my clients, like when I breathe them, like you can be of it, but you can't sink in it. There's got to be a different, you know, respect for that and feeling. So for you, how were you able to then move and then stay in where you are now? Where obviously now, like you said, it's transcended, I mean, so much. And I've watched you like quantum leap so much in every which way. Like, yeah. how were you able to allow yourself to move? Because I think so many, especially because of COVID of what you said and everything that's gone on with 2020 are in this space and you feel alone and you are in a mm-hmm. victim mentality, whether they are conscious of it or not. What would you say to people of how you were able to actually take that enlightening moment, that awakening moment? and move through and allow yourself to actually quantum leap and transcend further to where you are now? Um, well, one of those, that's a great question. One of those things is um, becoming quiet, even though you might already feel like, you know, it's quiet enough, right? We are so good at keeping ourselves busy, right? And finding something else to do. And, oh, my God, like, uh, I already finished everything. What else can I put onto my to-do list? And then I'm stressed out. The second thing is not creating boundaries with yourself. Well, or Mm -hmm. creating boundaries and not living up to those boundaries. Being a hypocrite in order, right? And, um, you know, the way that you create a boundary with yourself, you know, the way that you treat yourself is the way that other people will treat you. It's an open invitation. Right. And with those being said, it's about maintenance, right? It's about maintenance. You can only make quantum leaps if you create a disciplinary action around it, if you create a maintenance program around it. Every person is different, right? Just like me, I'm the third of three girls in my family. I come from the Midwest. My mother and my father are divorced. They are very different in their lifestyle. I don't eat animal. My dad, you know, for many of the years, my life would make fun of me from that, you know, that Midwest thing. Sure. And I had to realize when we talk about maintenance, discipline, boundaries, right? This is a small example, but that is toxic energy, right? In our sure. life, what that does to your body over time, or when a parent says, no, you can't, you won't be like that ever. You won't propel to those heights. Okay. So what is ingraining into your brain? So when you talk about quantum leap, Sally, you talk about, all right, you are in charge of your life, right? The trajectory that I want to go on, I want to create my own story, yeah. right? You can do that. Anyone can do it. Y'all have seen it happen multiple times again. You know, rappers are great examples. You know, sometimes they grow up in not great neighborhoods, right? They're part of gangs and stuff, but you see people that have flourished, right? Mm-hmm. Flourish. So it's about those are simple kind of just like brief tidbits to kind of bring up to you about that, right. but it can go on and on and on, but rewriting that story, huge right. step. Mm-hmm. Creating your own reality. Yeah. And taking little, and it's all about success and feeling success in it. Because if you have a little success, right. It's like waking up at 6am. I want to wake up at 6am, right. Every single day. All right. 6am have it stack it with something else after that. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. I get my beautiful cup of tea that I love. It makes me feel so good. All right. Maybe the next week you like make your bed too. Right. right you know, and you right. keep building upon that. Yeah. And what but you're speaking about- to, uh, what you're speaking to, to me, what I'm hearing over and over in my head is like radical responsibility. It's like really, really taking what you said before, like the reins, like really radically, like not just a little bit, not just, Oh, I'll show up some days. It's like, full blown, like what you did to order to be able to move forward and quantum leap at the level that you did and continue to. Totally. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And I think that's just so important for people to hear because like, yes, you can create your own reality. Absolutely. But how much are you willing to show up for it and actually do the work to create it versus waiting for it to be created for you because it's not going to be created for you. Yeah. About showing up. Yeah, that's a big ticker there. And you you mentioned something before I want to tap in on, um, shoot, what was it? Um, showing up and being responsible for yourself, being responsible for your actions, right? Actions do speak louder than words, right? Absolutely. I have so many people that are like, oh, I could do this. Some clients, I visit the same exact topic over and over again. And I'm like, well, here's your homework. 
you know, I'm like the worst, but best <laughs> accountability coach ever, even with my husband too. Like he's like, oh, oh totally. you, I, do I mean, Hey, you could use the example even with me tonight. Like I have I was like, Hey, can we push it? Like I've got this far that point. And you're like, babe, I am here. I'm ready. This is what I have to do. I got dinner. This time, right? And I was like, all right, I'll figure it out. I'll move things around and make it work. And that's a really small example. And we're friends and everything else, but, but it was holding me accountable to like, this yeah. is the time we booked. This is when we're going to record. And it's really easy to, you know, move things around because we all do that. And, and look, anyone who's listening or watching, there are times where that is totally oh. okay. And you have to give yourself totally. grace and tap out. And we, and, and KB and I have had many of those moments together as well, but I just think that was a good example at a simple level, that it was just like, totally. Hey, like, let's, let's make this happen because this is what we said we were going to do. You know what I mean? And like, I know. Really, you well, and like with those that being said, like, it's like, I always say like, we can always start something and we can always continue off later. Right. You know, like right. a podcast totally. is a great example. And, you know, I'm telling my husband, I'm like, I'm like, we've got two powerful women here, two mothers here that are trying to grow businesses. And I want everyone to hear this because I, we both probably hear people make so many excuses in their life, why oh. they cannot do something. Okay. So doesn't have to be, you know, an hour run. It could be a 10 minute run around the block, right? Or, right. A, you know, whatever. But it's, you know, it's about like just getting started, right? And we're both both busy. I get it totally, completely. But remember, like, I love saying this, like we are conscious beings, right? And consciousness yes, creates- Yes, I love you say that. Consciousness creates body. And we yes. know, we all know the way. But you mentioned something before I want to tap in on and really kind of lead with people is that like, you know, like you don't know how bad you really felt in your life until you had that ability to feel so good. Mm. Right. Yeah. Right. And that can be anything, food, you know, nutrition, working out, um, cleaning out toxic pro cleaning products from your house. You didn't know how bad the air was right. <laughs> or how bad That's that true. shampoo was until you don't have a headache anymore. You know, or right. You notice the shift. So all of a sudden it's true. I was saying this to my friend the other day who was like, you know, I, I want to start shifting things, but it just feels so overwhelming. And I was like, I, I love what you say, like with that maintenance program, like starting small, going bit by bit, because it can be so overwhelming when you just go, I'm going to change everything. It's like, yeah, no, you're going to have a freaking meltdown or a heart attack or something, because you're going to be like, I have to change this. I have to change that. Like you take it in bits, you take it in small amounts. You can actually like digest and understand and have a regulated nervous system while doing it. And so my girlfriend was saying to me, she's like, so what do you feel like some of the shifts are? And I was like, well, the consciousness, of course, what you spoke to so beautifully, KB, of like that embodying that body, but also like, I think, and I, so I see it with you and I see it with so many powerful women who have been going through this awakening and empowerment shift. It's like you glow from the inside out. It's like this oh. true wellness glow that is like in every aspect of your life. And it's this true glow and aura, whatever you want to describe it as. And it's like, this is real. Energy is real and you can yeah. see it and you can feel it. And it's emanating because you're taking yes. your power back in every way and you're dismissing the toxicity. Yes. Oh yeah. And um, you know, it's like earthing, right? Earthing, you know, when there are positive breath, like, you know, atoms like zapping around in us and we touch the earth which is very you know a negative base mm -hmm. it's like that magnet everything gets yes. stuck and just like cleared up right you know yeah and it's also about like you know the the bringing it out into the universe remember you know yes. everything that you say that you repeat that you cultivate in verbal form truly does manifest to the energy from the universe and yes. has the ability to become real in the embodiment form. Yes. Right? And thank you for that. Because I think that's such a, uh, such an important thing because some people say, oh, that's not real. That's not true. And da, 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 and all this stuff. And it's like, no, but it is. Cause if you really understand, like you said, we are energetic beings, we are conscious beings and everything is energy, then everything is going to affect that. And then your thoughts and your words are going to come from that energy and then essentially manifest into some part of your reality, especially if you are focused on them non-stop and we were talking about this on your show of like how you have like what six hundred thousand thoughts a day that aren't yours and it's like that's so insane but that's the reality of our world yeah. we consume so much and then it's like and then being conscious even deeper of like oh that's not mine oh that's not mine like I was telling like one of my clients the other day whenever now I experience something because I am more conscious and I realize it's not mine or I don't want it to be mine I say out loud cancel 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 three times like mm -hmm. that is my way of like shut it I down 
right? Take it. Like <laughs> cancel, cancel, cancel for anyone listening or watching. It's like, because it goes back to what you were saying. We are conscious beings and in the body. And when we embody, we're able to then move through transcend shift and quantum leap. If that's where we want to yes. do and not be stuck and be in what, you know, we were in before. And I love that you said too, about the, like, you wouldn't know that good, that joy until you experienced it. And it goes for also, wouldn't you say what you went through in your traumas, you wouldn't know yeah. where you could be now and how powerful you could be and how happy you could be if you hadn't potentially experienced all that, because you wouldn't necessarily have awakened to where you are now. Yeah. A hundred percent. One hundred percent. I've been asked multiple times, you know, would you ever change anything? And I know you know, I, I want to point this out there. We all have traumas, right? Big, small. And I hate that word. I kind of hate the word mm. trigger trauma because it's so like, almost like whatever. Well, it's but almost like, it's just like all encompassing of like, no matter what it is. And it's like, some things deserve to have, right. I get you. Yeah. But, but we were talking about shadow and light. I'm a huge proponent of that. You got to feel the shadows, right? Everyone's had traumas, right? But the thing is, and I respect everyone's size of traumas. But the thing is, you've got to, you've got to go through the shadow part. You've got to actually feel those feelings. Feelings are meant to be felt. You've got to feel them. You got to release them, right? Shadows are so sacred, right? Because without the shadow, there would be no light. Without light, right. there would be no shadow. And they're right. like, I mean, I love, that's part of the things I love. And I'm so passionate about outside when you see that dip you know, in the sun, you yeah. know, off, cascading off the tree, how beautiful it is, right? It we is, can all yeah. have that beauty within us. Our scars are beautiful, just mm. like that song, right? Yeah. Beautiful. But how can we transform that and teach and create unity with everyone about that? Because we all have something to learn from one another, right? Absolutely. So. And I think, I think you said that so beautifully and, and, and bringing that into dancing in the duality of that yeah. and being yes. able to be in that dark and light. Cause you said, we all have that. It is what it is. And two, you know, it's also like not buying into it as well. It's like, okay, this is of me and that's okay. But I don't have to buy into the shadow. I can see it. Mm -hmm. I can allow it to teach me. I can dip in, like you said, because we do have to feel and, we, you know, we absolutely should experience and feel our feelings and that are the lower frequencies of us. And that is the shadow, but not being sunk in it and like allowing us to be of it and not buy into it. And I think you just spoke so beautifully of like the beautiful scars and, you know, the beautiful shadow of what you look at when you're looking at it outside is how you can look at yourself and see yourself in that duality. hundred percent. You got it, sister. 100%. I love it. Well, I know we both, uh, mom, I have to get uh, back to it and all the things, but, um, <laughs> uh, fast and furious is how we roll. But, um, what else before I let you go, um, you know, would you want to, you know, say or share? And then of course, tell us we can find you and follow you and everything will be in the show mm -hmm. notes. And guys, I am on KB's podcast as well. We did a really hot power swaps. So we'll be putting them out together and we will also be continuing this on hopefully in person, uh, part two. So stay tuned. So tell us. Love. Yes. <laughs> First of all, thank you. I'm so grateful to be on the show. You are just a magical being in my life. I'm so happy we're friends. Um, Y'all can find me on Instagram at just being honest. KB Bean has no G. Um, I'm on the web at www.justbeinghonest.com. Um, I'm going to be coming out with some amazing things this next year, um, hosting some retreats and some other public speaking events. So please stay tuned to that. You can find some recipes on my website as well. Um, and if you want to hear more or work with me personally, I have select openings for one-on-one -on -one clients. I work all virtually, so it doesn't matter where you are and let's get started. You have it in you. So thank you so it. much. Thank you, my love. Everything will be in the show notes, guys. You can connect with KB, go follow her. She is so empowering. She also dropped so much greatness about how to make these little toxic free switches to like dial you into it till you're fully ready to let go of all the toxicity. She's such a light. Thank you, love, for being here. Thank you everyone for listening and watching. And if you haven't already, please leave a five-star review on the show. It helps others find the show. And I will drop also the episode that I'm on from KB so you guys can go and follow her amazing podcast. As always, I hope this awakened something in you, empowered you, cracked you open, helped you with your awakening. I'm Allie. Love, light, and blessings, everyone. Thanks so much. Bye.